maybe the best play of my career. And then I look like a fool falling on the ground trying to intercept it. <laughs> I'm a teammate, of course, a friend, yes, but I'm also a Papa Nicolau fan. Ah! Create your own website with ease using Hostinger AI Website Builder. Simply describe what you need in the prompt box and let AI generate a unique website for you. Hostinger, three, two, online. So this is Bats News Film Session. Uh, we're here with Thomas Falkup of Olympiago Spurs. Good to see you, man, and let's check some of your highlights. Let's do it. And of course, I cannot not <laughs> to start with this one. Uh, yeah, this was, uh, you see we have a foul to give. So it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to go for the steal. If he calls it, he calls it. Luckily, he didn't. You know, that was a super 50-50 play. Uh -huh. And uh, I knew that, that Slew would try to reje reject to his left, so I just kind of waited for it. Uh, and then Spanulis is coming at you. It felt like I had no idea everybody was, was just trying to jump on you. you I know, had no attack. idea. No idea he was there. And uh, looking back, I feel like Livio maybe could have blocked this, but... I just got it up, just trying to get it up on the rim. You know, as, You're, you were as just basically out, diving toward the basket, really. As thought like, out as a play as it looks like, it's really just like, get the ball up on the rim, we'll see what, what happens. But uh, maybe the best play of my career. I mean, one of the most exceptional plays, it's a game-winning steal, mm. conclu uh, concluded with dive toward the basket. That's a really crazy play. And Spinula should have had the steal too. He should have popped it out of bounds yes. yeah I, i'm glad <laughs> for whatever reason the angle of how he hit the ball like you know just but yeah that was a that was a hell of a play it's a fun one uh if you're the head coach who's your number one pick to have a, a defensive corner storm player on your team i would say mustafa Fow. okay why he's very good in drop defense he's very good in switch defense uh he protects the rim and also as a big man he's smart he, it's you know, we always joke around in basketball, oh, the bigs are dumb, but he's a very smart, he's an intelligent player. Uh, he understands the game and situations, um, and he just has good defensive instincts. So that size compared with those instincts, um, to me, I think, you know, uh, extremely, extremely part, uh, important part of our defense. Okay, speaking of defense, you had this amazing opportunity to play with one of the best offensive players mm -hmm. in the entire world. Mm -hmm how it feels to try to catch Luka Doncic's bounce pass. Did you see it coming? Because actually it was a no-look bounce pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the replay. He, so... He almost fell. He, <laughs> he does things... Like, I, I pride on having good defensive instincts, and there's things that I think... I see this coming, I see that coming, I'm going to try and sniff this out. And you see here, I, I, I saw a big running down the court and I thought, he's not going to make it. He's not going to make that pass. And I really thought, there's no way he makes that pass. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> and then I look like a fool falling on the ground trying to intercept it <laughs> at the last second. But he sees things in slow motion, you know. he. He understands angles super well. He understands not just where everybody's at in the current moment, but where everybody's going to be at in the next one or two seconds also. You know, it's in a basketball game, is an eternity. How did you try to contain uh, him during that game? I know it's a, it was a friendly game, and actually it was a good yeah. game for you. You get you hit some, you know, late mm -hmm. game daggers and stuff. But from the defensive standpoint, what was your approach? Put a body on. Don't let him feel comfortable. You know, you see, uh, there's a lot of difference between, differences between the European game and, the, and the, the NBA game, but I think physicality is definitely a big part of it. And uh, I think, you know, in the NBA, he's so good because he has so much space because he's so good at drawing fouls. You know, here trying to stay stay connected, trying to, to keep contact on him, you know, and not let him feel so comfortable. Um, even though this is why he's one of the best players in the world because he's really good at, at creating you know space so he can feel comfortable do you think you made him uncomfortable did you feel that way um i don't think we did a great job in this game you know i thought he kind of did uh what he pleased in this game uh but the game here in Owaka, and again it's a friendly game you know I, I didn't think it was myself but i thought we as a team did a really good job of playing you know five against one you know and making him making him spray the ball out a little bit more uh you know, he's going to get a lot of easy stuff, a lot of easy buckets, make a lot of passes that look easy. Um, but again, it's, it's trying to make those plays that he's going to make you the way difficult. <laughs> you love this one. I do love this one. 
Man, you know, I should have had the steal the first time. Then it came back to me. Oh, man. What's this? <laughs> I was so surprised by the outcome of this play, to be honest, because I forgot that play. And to see Costas jumping almost over the guy and dunking it. You know, before... I'm... I'm... All a teammate, of course, a friend, yes, but I'm also a Papa Nicolau fan. You know, I <laughs> I love watching so many times. I've gone and watched Papa Nicolau highlights. You know, from the NBA. I just I don't know, just a basketball junkie thing, I guess. And to see, you know, how he used used to jump. This is like a no-brainer, you know. Delo ne never would have stepped in there for this charge, and uh, obviously he was feeling good this day, and. Uh, yeah, in my three years here, we've seen a couple posters. So, yeah, that, that, that was, uh, First, was just a, a game, a really fun game. This was. There had to be some kind of a celebration after the game, and some, you know, trash talk regarding this play. It's a no-brainer. It's impossible to avoid that, right? Uh, I, you know, during this time we were on a little bit of a run, and you could see, like, I jumped a little bit with him. I was screaming. I got a little lightheaded from, from how I was screaming. And I think maybe Pop did too. But that stank face that, that he makes after the dunk, you know, that's a famous one. Every, it, everybody loves that it face. It was this Dwayne Wade and LeBron James lob yeah, moment, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, is this game one or game five? Game one. Yeah, this game one. Yeah, uh, this one was this one was great. Dorsey was doing a great job all series long, of pressuring up on the ball, uh, <laughs> uh, doing a great job pressuring up on the ball, and and, and we needed a little something at the moment. Uh, and okay, I played against and with Leo for so many years. I know he uses his size. He does the spin dribble and, you know, loses mm -hmm. sight a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I saw the opportunity and I went for it. And it doesn't hurt, you know, looking back onto that. There was Mike James that tried to block the shot. The all-time leading score in your league, you know. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And by the way, did you notice this smile? Smiled at by Tyler Dorsey. He was actually <laughs> shouting at the guy. <laughs> I've, I've never noticed that. You know, Tyler's a super, super laid back, cool guy. But in the game, you know, I love his competitor. <laughs> he, he brings it in the game. I love, I love, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a Greek league game, if a Euro League, you know, Final Four, he brings it, you know, and, and I love that about him. Oh, this is some fresh one, actually. Oh. This, oh. Was, this is very oh. fresh. I haven't seen it, but I, I need I your think reaction. I, Ah, that was my reaction during the game. <laughs> it was like, oh, he's he's gonna he's gonna float that, and you know, from the other bench where we were, we didn't realize he was so close to the rim. But uh, I've never seen somebody do that to Lasort. That's true because usually Lasort is on the opposite side of the floor, actually. Yeah, yeah. But Mo Mo played great tonight. Uh, and has looked great. I, I don't know if I've seen somebody make a, such a smooth transition mm -hmm. to Euroleague. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about this one? <laughs> when you said you were going to show the best and worst Kali <laughs> uh whenever you said you were going to show the best and worst plays, Right before this, when they scored, I had a huge turnover. A I huge turnover. Recall that, we, to be we get the ball, um, something like uh, 15 seconds left. We get the ball off of a defensive rebound. I go to outlet to slew, and as he kind of takes off, so I throw the ball, but then last second, try and, mm -hmm. the, and I turn I the ball. I think I remember that. Yeah. We were up one. They score. Goodrich scores. Or actually, I think we may have been tied. They score. Yeah, Goodrich is the jumper. And so that shot to me is more than... <laughs> it basically more saved than your life, just, right? Yes. <laughs> it's more than just, oh, we won the game, you know, uh, and it was a fun time. But, yeah, he saved me. He saved me on this one. And I told him after when we all ran into the tunnel, I said, you saved me. And Lauren Zeich has told me he's, you, he saved you. you. You got lucky. And I said, I did. I did. Was it according to the playbook of Bartsokas? I mean, this whole inbound situation? Yeah, it was to, to get Slew up here and then we got a 1-4 a 
And Sasha does a great job of flip, flipping the pick too. Fenerbahce fans will comment that it was a travel for sure. I mean, did you see, I mean, did you hear all this noise about travel? Look, dancing I think with the ball a bit. Pause it on a lot of EuroLeague <laughs> Uh, game winners catch and, and ah, to get yeah. into triple threat. If it's if it's game winners or if it's in the first quarter, you're gonna mm -hmm. see a lot of travels. At the end of this game, iconic moments. Yeah. And my idea was, you know, oh, big shots. My idea was like during this apocalypse mm -hmm. in this stadium, <clears throat> where you've been, what was happening around you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, during this, I don't know if I've ever been so happy on a basketball court, you know. This was a really, really, really difficult series. I thought uh, we finished in second in EuroLeague, mm -hmm. and we got maybe the hottest team in EuroLeague at the time in Monaco with the best scorer in EuroLeague. Uh, and it was a super tough match, a super stressful matchup. Um, both mentally and physically, but to end it like this on with this environment, with everybody that was in the crowd, uh, it was incredible. It was, I, I still watching this, I get the chills because uh, I, I can remember how I felt as the closing, you know, seconds of this game ticked away, uh, and you could see all the flares lighting. You could see what it means to the fans. You could see what it means to us as players. You know, it was. It was incredible. I need you to end <laughs> this one. Two Lithuanians and an American walk into the bar. Uh, what happens next? And especially if we're talking about these two Lithuanians and this one American. Uh, so, you know, there's the joke, you know, it's like uh, uh, a priest, a pimp and a, and a mechanic walk into a bar, yep. you know? And the joke, something that goes like, with this, the two Lithuanians and American walk into the bar, was uh, I told them the joke. They didn't under, they didn't grasp the joke, and I think Malagnes replied something with, "Yes, two Lithuanians and American walk into the woods, and nobody ever sees the American again." So, <laughs> so something along these lines, uh, and then it just became a running joke from that from that point on. But uh, two of my best friends that I played with through my career, uh, both of those guys. Um, this is such a fun picture. Uh, I wish I knew what game this was after. Um, mm, it looks I like year, no two, look, year two in Jagadis. Um There's Jock Landale yeah. behind you, so probably. Yeah, yeah year two. But it's just a really, a really fun group of guys and fantastic locker room that we had there. You're fantastic too. Thanks, man. Thanks, I brother. Appreciate it.